Welcome to Regenerative Wisdom, your go-to source for mastering advanced regenerative agriculture practices. In this podcast series, we explore expert insights straight from the Stockman Grass Farmer magazine to help you enhance your farm's productivity, profitability, and ecological health. Each episode dives deep into crucial topics like soil regeneration, rotational grazing, and ecosystem-based solutions. Whether you're refining your grazing management or seeking innovative strategies to build a sustainable operation, Regenerative Wisdom is here to guide you on your journey towards smarter, more resilient farming. In this episode of Regenerative Wisdom, sourced from the Stockman Grass Farmer magazine, Will Winter brings his expertise in livestock nutrition to debunk the top 10 myths and lies about livestock mineral supplements. From misconceptions about local mixes and homemade blends to the critical importance of proper supplementation for herd health and profitability, Winter delivers a wealth of practical advice and thought-provoking insights. If you're looking to optimize your livestock's nutrition and improve your ranch's bottom line, this is an episode you won't want to miss. Buy local. The one place where buy local doesn't carry merit is mineral mixes from the neighborhood mill. I know this because I've reviewed about 1,200 of the labels that people sent me. Being a formulator myself, I can not only read the printed lines, I can read between the lines. There are clear red flags on the label that tip me off about the quality of the products. In addition, your local source may be a retailer who bought it from someone else, requiring more margins and increasing the price. Homemade mixes, many of these DIY, do-it-yourself dabbler mixes can be more dangerous than not giving supplements at all. That's because of what's called the mineral wheel, an easily downloadable chart that shows which minerals dominate, thereby diminishing the other minerals. Achieving balance in formulations is not easy. Again, I know this from having designed recipes for several decades. The typical blend is a hodgepodge of a little bit of this and a little bit of that and that is bound to be cockeyed. All too often people read a book or listen to an expert and get fixated on one thing, quite often copper, boron, phosphorus, or selenium, buying those in single amounts. Single mineral, 50-pound bags preclude getting volume discounts a reputable manufacturer can get. Professional formulators buy ingredients in barrels, totes, semi-loads, and even train loads. Secondly, I can almost guarantee that you will be coming home with Chinese ingredients. I've done the tracking, and almost without exception, the true source is almost always China. Why? Because it's about one-tenth the price of the good stuff, which often comes from unique laboratories in Germany. The reason we do our best to avoid Chinese ingredients is that tests prove them to be contaminated with toxic heavy metals such as cadmium, mercury, arsenic, and lead, as well as dirty pesticide residue. Always mix salt with the minerals? No. Salt will not only rust out your pickup truck, it does the same with certain chemicals. With any storage in the bag or in the bin, it will corrode or oxidize any good chelated minerals, and will likewise destroy the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, 3, E, and K. Land-grant colleges teach that since animals are stupid and man is smart, we need to protect them from wasting minerals that they don't really need. This is, as Dr. Fred Provenza has proven beyond all doubt, totally wrong. Animals know exactly what they need and they will do everything possible to correct deficiencies or other toxic situations. This is why back in the old days pregnant women might eat a handful of dirt or crave strange foods and condiments. When animals are stressed, sick, pregnant, nursing, or otherwise in bad shape, they will try to rebuild their bodies by taking in additional minerals and vitamins. If the bin is loaded with salt, they can only consume so much, thus not being able to self-medicate. Likewise, in super hot weather or with problematic forages, they will try to consume more salt to balance their pH and electrolytes, and they want salt, just salt, not a mixture. To make this easy to achieve, just put a plywood panel across the mineral box to make it easy for them to choose. DDGs add palatability and have no negative effects. More sad news. These byproducts of the distilling industry like ethanol plants are not only GMO and glyphosate saturated, 
They contain fungicides, antibiotics, and other chemicals used to extract the alcohol. This is such a lucrative industry that approximately 80% of all livestock supplement companies are really just outlets for ethanol swill. They then spoon in just enough Chinese minerals to be able to sell it as a mineral mix. These products are anti-fertility, anti-production, and a bad buy. I've been giving minerals for years. I think my soil has plenty of minerals now. Dream on. The truth is no soil anywhere has enough of everything. It never did. That's why the bison, the elk, and other wildlife migrated. Granted, you will eventually begin to see diminished consumption. That's a good thing. But don't try to go without an added free choice supply option. These are dry cows. They don't need minerals. Oh yes, they do. I've harped on this before, but starving your pregnant and therefore most valuable animals is one of the craziest concepts in all of livestock rearing. This is the stage of life and production when they need the best of everything. My animals won't eat these minerals, they must not need them. Repugnancy has many reasons, lack of need is not one of them. Mixes can get wet, caked, and devitalized. Rain, sun, or exposure ruins minerals. Never put out very much and keep it dry and out of the direct sun. Another explanation comes from Dr. Provenza, who teaches us that animals are often neophobic, meaning afraid of new things. Especially when switching minerals or brands, monitor consumption and use some sort of enticer if needed to get up to the recommended level. Common enticers are salt, only for a few days or weeks though. Wet or dry molasses, plain sugar, kelp, or even the former mineral they're used to. Whenever possible, make a switch slowly, only a few percent at a time. My animals gobble up this mineral. That means it's really good. This is one of the best sales tactics used by the cheap companies. It's especially common with the big ag companies such as Purina or Cargill. All they have to do is add their own enticers from the beginning, and the animals will eat it, even if the true value is very low. The cheaper the product, the more likely it is that they have added things like wheat mids, rice hulls, DDGs, molasses byproducts, tons of salt, artificial flavorings, or other low-quality enticers. This then lures ranchers into thinking that it is a great product. Germs cause disease. Probably the most powerful conceptual change in medical and veterinary thinking in the last 100 years is the Louis Pasteur germ theory. Daily being disproven, it was even abandoned by Pasteur, who on his deathbed admitted that his terrain theory counterpart Michael Beauchamp was right. Beauchamp is correct. The germ is nothing. The terrain, the body, is everything. And then he died. The reason I mention this is that almost never do ranchers, farmers, or even vets trace diseases or parasites back to what is the true cause. The germ or parasite gets the blame, and the investigation stops there. Then come the wormers, vaccines, and antibiotics. It's tremendously good for business for Big Pharma. Good minerals are nice, but just too expensive. I hear it all the time. And there are several versions, either it's, we don't pamper our cows, or I want cattle with the genetics to thrive on my farm. Or even, and this is a true story with a direct quote, my great grandpappy homesteaded this here ranch, and he said he didn't see no engines out there giving them buffalo minerals. My response, and this was on a vet call for a very sick herd was, so, how's that working out for you? Anyway, the bottom line that I see is the exact opposite. I don't believe anyone can afford to shortchange nutrition. And I mean nutrition on every level, not just protein, fiber, and energy, but also every essential mineral and every essential vitamin. They aren't called essential for nothing. Whether it comes out of a bag or out of the forages, it's not optional. When all the nutritional needs are fully met and all the other basics of natural rearing are achieved, there will never be a need for antibiotics, wormers, or vaccines, and there will be radiant health and renewed profitability. It sounds ridiculously simple, but when people call me with herd health problems, I say, in essence, let's go to the cause behind the cause behind the cause behind the cause and just fix the nutrition and see what happens.
In over 98% of the cases, not only do the problems go away seemingly magically and within weeks or even days, but livestock production and ranch profits go up, up, up. Will Winter is a retired veterinarian, a holistic herd health consultant, and livestock nutritionist in Minnesota. Reach him at 612-756-1232 or willwinterdvm at gmail.com.